Sometimes you're right in the middle of cleaning out the drain in the shower and you start pondering questions like, why is my hair a different color from my mom's hair, or my neighbor's hair, or my roommate's disgusting, soggy, three foot long wolf tail drain wad? What's the real difference between blonde hair, black hair, red hair, and everything in between? The main structural ingredient in human hair is a protein called keratin. It's what your hair and fingernails are made of, but also what's behind the silky sheen of wool, bear claws, and horse hooves. Mmm, don't you just want to run your fingers through those hooves? Just me? But keratin on its own is not very colorful, and if all humans had on our head was keratin, we'd look like 18th century French aristocrats in powdered wigs because we'd all have the same sort of white, colorless hair. But keratin is not the only ingredient in human hair. To create natural color, you need to add pigment. And this is done by cells in the skin called melanocytes. These melanocytes create the natural pigment known as melanin and deliver it to the cells that create keratin for your hair. Now this melanin comes in two varieties, eumelanin and pheomelanin. Eumelanin is a dark pigment that gives hair a brown or black color. Pheomelanin is a lighter pigment that gives hair a red, orange, or yellowish color. Both of these are present in varying degrees, so a person might have a little of each or a lot of one or almost none of the other. So someone with black or dark brown hair probably has a lot of eumelanin, not to brag. A redhead has a lot of pheomelanin, and blondes don't have very much of either one. <laughs> So what happens when we get older and start to go gray? Well, you can probably guess. Over time, melanocytes start to die off and any new hair that grows has less pigment, so it looks gray or white. But you might be asking, what determines the eumelanin to pheomelanin mixture to begin with? Who writes that hair color recipe? Primarily, it's your genes. For example, the melanocortin-1 receptor, or MC1R gene. When the protein associated with this gene is active in the melanocytes, it stimulates them to make eumelanin, the pigment that colors black or brown hair. When MC1R is not active in the melanocyte cells, they make mostly pheomelanin instead, and hello Weasleys! But the MC1R gene is not the only genetic factor that controls hair color. Like most of your traits, hair color is actually affected by more than one genetic variable. So. That's the scoop on hair color. But hey, what's the weirdest thing you've ever noticed about human hair? Let us know in the comments, and if you ever want to learn more about the strange science of the human body with brain stuff questions like, why don't humans have tails? Click subscribe, and we'll see you again next time. <laughs> so I don't know. Who writes the hair color recipe? Not Betty Crocker. It's your genes.